making uh, another pork chop recipe. Uh, this one has an oniony gravy on it. Um, the, the smell when you're cooking this is just amazing. So I wanna give you a little closer look. This is what it looks like. It's a thin sauce. And I serve it with some steamed veggies and rice. I always like to have a little extra gravy on the side. You can pour on your rice if you like, or for your meat as well. So come along and let's start cooking. Okay, let's take a look at the ingredients. As you can see, a lot of these things are common items that you have in your pantry and your refrigerator and freezer already. So let's start going over the list. First, you need some pork chops. I only had three available. The recipe calls for four, so there's plenty of sauce and ingredients to make four. I only had three, so you make three or four. Some butter to saute the pork chops in and deglaze the pan. And since I don't have sour cream, I'm gonna be making my own sour cream with some cream cheese, lemon, and milk. Some chicken broth, some kosher salt, garlic powder, black pepper, and Tony Kacheri's more spice. That's my favorite seasoning in the kitchen right now. Two onions, a half a cup of flour for dredging, and we're ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and start prepping our ingredients. We need about four tablespoons of butter. And I'm gonna take our four tablespoons and cut it in half because I'm gonna use the butter in two different uh, times I'm cooking in the Instapot. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get my onions ready. You need to peel the onions first. I like to cut off the bottom ends first. It makes it easier for me to pull off the skin. Once you peel them, then you're gonna slice them down the middle, put them on the flat side and cut them thinly. So you have these little half circle thin slices. They're gonna cook down so small. So um, if they some slices come out too thick, don't worry about it. And you're just gonna cut up all your onions, put them on a plate. You can see some of my slices are a little bigger, some are a little skinnier. It's your preference, really. And repeat this for both onions. Put them on the plate. And although it looks like a lot of onions, it's gonna cook down to not much at all. This next step, we're gonna go ahead and get the dredge ready for our pork chops. You can do it a few different ways. I like to sprinkle the seasoning directly onto the meat and then put it into the flour dredge, but you can also season the dredge and then just roll it in that, that way. It's up to you. So I put the seasoning on one side, put it on the other side, put on my cracked black pepper, push it in, you know, get it all on there nice and well, and I put it onto a clean surface. So I do that for all three pork chops and I'm done with that step. Now I've put the pot on saute mode and I've melted the butter and now I'm trying to brown the pork chops. I actually have it on medium temperature for the browning. And you wanna do it low and slow. You don't wanna do it too high and burn, burn them too much, unless you like them that way. I like mine golden brown all the way through. And as you can see here, nice and golden. And there's plenty of butter in there for uh, both rounds of pork chops, even if you had four pieces. And they should all be evenly golden brown, not burnt like this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the remaining two tablespoons of butter in my pan and to glaze the pan a bit. What we're trying to do is get all the flavor that's in the bits at the bottom of the pan to be able to cook together with the onions. This is gonna become the base of our sauce. And we're gonna saute these onions and cook them down. Because this is only on medium heat, it's not really caramelizing per se. It's really just cooking down and reducing it and softening up. Before it gets to the real extreme caramelization level, we're gonna be uh, stopping the process and moving on to the next step. So as you can see, I'm using the butter to help deglaze the pan and really bits come off so easily on these type of pans. I always use rubber or wooden utensils so I don't ruin my pot. And as you can see, after just a few minutes, this is probably about five minutes, my onions are really starting to cook down. And the onions are just about ready. They're a little bit brown, they're not so much caramelized, and they're ready to go. Now I'm gonna add in a cup of low sodium chicken broth. 
This is gonna help make our gravy and this counts for the liquid needed to make the pressure cooker work properly. If you want a little bit more um, sauce, you can add some more chicken broth. I put my pork chops back in and as you can see, I added in the little bit more chicken broth. Put on the lid and I'm gonna hit cancel from the saute mode. And now I'm going to do manual mode for 10 minutes on high pressure. That's it, that's all it needs. Make sure that the pot is in the ceiling position. You wanna be able to let the pot get to pressure. Okay, so if you have sour cream on hand, you can just substitute a quarter cup of sour cream. Since I don't have any, I'm gonna make my own. I thought this was really cool. So easy. I put in softened uh, four tablespoons of cream cheese. I'm gonna use my tablespoon and put in two tablespoons of skim milk or whatever type of milk you happen to have on hand. I'm gonna take my lemon and juice it and add two tablespoons of lemon juice. Then I'm gonna mix it in the blender. And if it's too thick, keep adding a tablespoon at a time of milk till it's the right consistency for you. So now the pressure cooker is done and now I'm gonna let it sit at natural release for 10 minutes. And you know it's in natural release because the counter has an L in front of it and the number's going up. So now we're at eight, nine, 10, and we're done. So now I'm gonna hit cancel and we're gonna go ahead and do the quick release to let the rest of the pressure release and the, wait for the pin to go down so we can unlock the lid. And this is what it looks like. The gravy has turned nice and rich and brown. And now we're gonna thicken it up and cream it up a little bit with the sour cream or the handmade sour cream. You can put the machine back on saute, but mine was still warm enough. You can see I'm checking for doneness and it looks like it's done. I was trying to break a piece off and you could see it was tender, but not falling apart too much. And there you have it, the final product. Creamy, juicy, moist pork chops in the Instapot. If you like this recipe, please give it a thumbs up. If you've made it and you like the way it comes out, please give me a comment and let me know. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.